Well hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Wild Your Garden and in this video it's just a bit of an update really on the current situation with the Bourne Woods felling saga which you may have seen already. Um, if you haven't then do check out the previous videos on the channel. I have been documenting um, what I believe are some unlawful practices that are being carried out by the Forestry Commission where they are permitting uh, the logging of trees and obviously the collection of this timber and we're now into April, which is well into the bird nesting season. And as I say, check out the previous video for, um, you know, what my findings were. But in this video, I wanted to update you. I now have had a response from the Forestry Commission and the RSPB, bit of a copy and paste job. I'm not quite satisfied that they are really getting the message that I'm trying to get across here. So I will put at the end of this video, stay tuned till the end, because I will put a, a, a screen, few screenshots in of my response to the Forestry Commission asking for more answers, basically, in a bit more detail as to the felling times, what is permitted, you know, and what is going to go on in these woods, because they are still carrying out works on this western side. They're still felling trees left, right and centre, and you can see the amount of timber that's due to be extracted now a couple of points that i've since discovered since i made the last video is that the forestry commission were actually given a formal warning and a big slap on the back of the wrist for um, what what should have been the thinning of 1.34 hectares of woodland a few years ago but actually uh the whole site was clear felled and also um there was another site in cumbria where they actually planted several acres of sitka spruce on a very vital habitat that is our peat bogs which of course are declining at an alarming rate so um yes which they were then forced to remove the, the, all the trees had to be pulled up so and again that's not a dig in itself but it's just reiterating the fact that we have to question you know these government run bodies because you know <laughs> it's too easy to be complacent become complacent and sort of sit back and think well that's okay they're an official body they they're doing everything's by the rule book well actually they're not some of the time so you need to if you see any works like this going on in your local woods then please do get in touch and you know i'll let you know how you can help and but a big huge thank you to all of you that have been emailing in <clears throat> and getting in touch it's been fantastic to see the response there's been so many people that have been contacting the rspb the forestry commission um, and natural england to express your concerns about these works and of course now i'm trying to prove that we are going into the nesting season we're well in well we are second of april today the the nesting season season for birds is in full swing and of course it means that so many of the boxes around here there's a box just behind this log stack there there's one just over my shoulder are being visited by blue tits great tits and i'm sure they are going to be disturbed when these log stacks are removed but not only that um, I've had two helpers with me today which are uh, <laughs> Ethan and Lila hi. say hi kids hi. Um, and what have we found today we found a robin flying in and out of the logs can you hear him singing in the background yeah and we're 19% sure that he lives in there well we think probably that the yeah. female is on eggs don't we we think the robin is making a nest in there. Yeah. And you can hear the male singing there. Look, and he's actually sat on top of the logs. Can you see? It's actually on top, on the backside, on that branch over there. Which is, so that is a sign of a male on territory. So that log stack is his territory. And we're 90% sure, as I say, the female is in there on eggs. Uh, because he keeps going in and out obviously with us not being permitted to climb all over the sacks for safety grounds rightfully so that's why these signs are put in place i'm not about to start going clambering through tons of timber to try and find and of course then disturb the female so just another example even though the felling works aren't going on in this area although if you look around there are still green dots on many of the trees around here which is obviously the green dots I've learnt and the pink dots from the previous video are meant, I believe, for different contractors. But it's one of the questions that I was asking the Forestry Commission to answer, which hopefully I'll have an answer for you soon. Um, but regardless of whether any more trees are felled, this timber is yet to be collected. And there's clearly robins nesting in that log stack, which of course they will do in the wild. They'll nest low down in log stacks, in brash piles. I've seen them nest on like a, a an old uh, jumbo sack, you know, in a garage about a foot off the floor. They'll nest almost anywhere, old boots, <laughs> wellies, all sorts in garages, as you probably know, kettles the lot, you know. So 
Robins will nest almost anywhere, as will wrens, dunnocks, song thrush, blackbird. They'll nest in log stacks like this. So I'm very conscious there are nesting birds that are going to be disturbed if this timber is collected. And, you know, I don't think you need more evidence than that. There, there, there is no hard and fast way about saying these birds are going to be disturbed if this timber is collected. So I just wanted to highlight those points to you today, give you a bit more of an insight and an update. And, you know, we need a change. I think the biggest thing we need to try and implement and a guy that's been in touch recently on the email a lot who's been really helping with the campaign has suggested and I think is quite rightfully so we try and differentiate between the commercial plantations for um, for a woodland uh, or sort of for a timber crop and our public spaces. Now I know the public spaces still need managing but there are so many Forestry Commission owned woodlands that are being managed without um, you know, without people visiting. So why can't we differentiate between, you know, commercial woodland, which is mostly kind of Sitka spruce, you know, and that sort of thing, which is obviously then harvested in mass or in bulk. So, um, you know, I just think there needs to be a reform in the way we manage our woodlands and the timings. You know, the main point is the timings, but if we can change the way we manage them so that our public spaces, the ones that are visited by the public, are managed in a more sympathetic way, I think that would be the way forward. So... I really hope that's given you a bit of an update, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Please feel free to subscribe and give the video a like if you have enjoyed the video. And I will certainly be bringing you more updates on all of the information I discover when I find it. So, from all of us in Bourne Woods, see you soon. Bye. Bye. Hello, everyone. My name's Lila and I'm going to be a mountain climber. And I'm going to be climbing a mountain. And this is the mountain. I'm already halfway there. So I'm going to get to the top and see what's up there. And can I have a baby so yeah. back? No, you've got legs. So I'm going to start going. Are we nearly at the top, Lila?